All right, we are back. And so you meet uh, Taylor. She heads up uh, university and diversity recruiting at Selenice. And Selenice is uh, is a company that's been around, uh, you know, for a, a very long time and is is, is a Fortune 500 company uh, that does a lot of specialties, uh, specialty materials and, and chemical, you know, it's chemical uh, engineering. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and just definitely, uh, as far as I understand, uh, you know, dominates a lot of a lot of areas in that space. I mean, large market share. And uh, she uh, was going to tell you about Selenice. So I will hop off here and turn it over to you. OK, awesome. Thanks, Leroy. Hi, everyone. I hope you guys are all having um, fun with the um, hackathon event. I know it's been a very busy week and you're getting close to the finish line, but um, I'm glad to be here with you guys today so we can take a few minutes just to talk about Selenies and, um, you know, potentially what some opportunities might look like and just a company overview. So I'm going to share my screen with you guys and um, hopefully um, I'm doing this all correctly. So let's see. Okay, you should be able to see the screen now. So I'm going to kind of go through this, but like Leroy said, I lead university and diversity recruiting for Selenies. i um, been here for about um, four years. And so we have, I, I lead university recruiting all over the, the globe, actually. So we're, we're expanding and being able to do some internships in other areas. But what I wanted to do is kind of walk you through the organization and just kind of give you a little bit of background because chances are, you have not heard of Selenies before, um, and maybe you know through this event was your first way about hearing about us. So let me go to the next slide here. Okay, perfect. So um, yes, we are a, a chemical innovation company, right? So essentially, we make products that make other products, and these products are really essential to um, people's everyday life. They're essential to everyday living. I promise you, you're surrounded by at least 10, 12, 20 products that Salonese makes right now in, in whichever space you're sitting at. So we'll talk about what some of those products look like in just a little bit, but we are headquartered in Dallas, Texas. That's actually where I am. I'm at my home office right now, but um, I do work in the Dallas office. We're $6.3 billion in net sales in 2019. And this is similar for 2020. We're about to have all of the the close of, of 2020 updated, so we'll have that information. We're a Fortune 500, so we do fluctuate on the list a little bit, but we've always been a Fortune 500 company, and we have about 7,700 employees worldwide. And so worldwide, we have about those 42 manufacturing facilities in 19 countries. And then we did start um, our business back in 1918, so it's been quite a while. Uh, we've been around for a long time, longer than any of us ha have been in existence. Um, so that's a picture, too, of our Dallas headquarters. So we have some vision and values and just kind of wanted to show you guys a little bit of a glimpse of what that looks like. So um, our, our vision is to really improve the world and everyday life through our people, chemistry and innovation. And then we do that through people, safety, customers, quality, community and shareholders. And a lot of kind of what we'll talk about today, you'll see some of these values kind of woven into the fabric of how Salonese does business. This is a look at our global footprint. This is always really interesting for people to see. Um, and this includes joint ventures. Joint ventures means that Salonese essentially teamed up with another company in order to do a business venture, right? Um, so I told you guys that we're, the headquarters is here in Dallas. Um, but you can kind of see all of the other locations. I mean, we um, have a lot of locations in Europe, a lot in Asia. What I really think is interesting about this slide is if you kind of slice the company into thirds, then you're able to say um, it's really that that each region is producing about the same amount of revenue. So I thought that that was really interesting when I first uh, first learned that. So you're probably like, well, what can we get to the meat and potatoes? Like, what do we actually do? So um, I told you that we make products and make other products. So here's kind of some examples that you probably are familiar with. Some of you, like I said, might be surrounded by some of these items right now. Um, so we go into food ingredients, um, kind of some of the sweeteners that go into those. So it could be chewing gums or Coke Zero or um, sugar-free Jello. There's also um, emulsions and paints and coatings. So essentially, Bayer or Sherwin-Williams paints, like the ability for the paint to actually stick to the wall is because of technology that Selenies makes. It's an emulsion. 
that same emulsion, which is just a glue basically, goes into Gorilla Glue. So um, Celanese is actually 99% um, Gorilla Glue is actually 99% Celanese and they just add a little dash of orange food coloring and they put a label on it and then it's Gorilla Glue. Um, we also go into medical applications. So um, when we talk about medical applications, we're really talking about plastics and things that make them medically safe. So we're talking inhalers, injection pins, and implants. So knee and hip replacements, jaw replacements, those are selenies. So if you know any family members or friends with them, they have selenies inside of their, their body, which is, you know, when we talk about making a difference in people's um, lives in, in these products, I mean, that's really what we're talking about, right? Um, we also go into the automotive industry. So we're in four and a half pounds of every single car in the entire world. And it's four and a half pounds minimum. So the Ford F-150 is the car that we're in the most in the U.S. And it's roughly um, about 45 pounds, which is just kind of, um, it, it's, a, it's a lot if you think about it. So we're talking like rear view mirrors, trunk levers, door handles, those types of things. So I didn't lie when I said that you're really close um, to some Celanese products. We also, some of the emulsions that we make go inside of the like baby wipes. So when you think about like the structural integrity of a wipe and it not breaking down when you use it, which is very important, that's because of Salonese technology. So I can't see questions, so I don't know if anyone has any questions, but um, there's a chat stream over on there's a chat stream over on, I, on So on can right. I just click the events? Yeah, if you click the if on the right hand side, if okay. you can the, uh, expand that out and click stage, that would be any questions that they oh, uh, stage. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, so I've got um, a view of that now. So if anyone has any questions, you can roll it through and I should be able to catch them. So um, let's move on to the next piece, which I think that you'll find this really interesting. So this is really a breakdown of our diverse product portfolio. So all the things that I was just talking about, right, they fit into a little bucket here at Salonese. Um, and we have a lot of buckets, which is very good because it makes us really, really resilient in the marketplace when things shift. So um, you can see here that paints and coatings is about 13%. Um, the automotive industry that we're talking about is 17%. Medical applications at 11. So if you guys think about last year when COVID hit, um, you know, March, April, May, and the government essentially said, hey, automotive industry, Ford, GM, stop making cars. No one's buying them. Please make ventilators, right? Can you guys all think back? Um, maybe some of us don't want to think back to that time when all of this started. But Celanese, like I said, we, we have 17% of our business is not in automotive, but we have so, you know, the majority in our, of our business is in other spaces. So when I say that that makes us resilient in the marketplace when things shift and needs change, so we lost that business for a few months and then it returns, but we were able to focus on other areas and not lose um, all of our revenue if it was just dedicated to one source. Um, so we have a few different um, channels. Uh, you'll see them here. So engineer materials, acetyls, and acetate toe. And so basically all of the things that you see around in the circle are kind of, they're part of one of those pieces. So like the paints and coatings goes in the acetyls chain, Food ingredients goes in engineer materials, and then filter media goes in acetate toe. But that's getting a little bit inside baseball. Um, I'll move on to the next slide. If no one has any questions. Um, thanks, Leroy, for sending that uh, that that through. So yeah, if you go to selenies.com, you can look at all of you can look at different products that we have. You can kind of read more about them. Um, there's things that go inside of batteries. Um, it's going to be kind of crazy, all of the things that you are exposed to that we go into. You're just not necessarily familiar with us because you don't go to Target or Walmart and buy Celanese in a box off the shelf, right? Um, I wanted to show you guys a little bit more about our employee resource groups because um, as you're kind of thinking about entering in your uh, career and things, most of most companies have employee resource groups. And it's good to kind of get exposure to these. But the way that they work at Selenies is a lot different than other companies in general. So um, the leaders of employee resource groups are, are really tied into company initiatives. They're tied into changes that need to be happening for the, the greater good of all of the employees. 
So essentially, employee resource groups are underrepresented communities within the organization, right? So we have um, a lot of different groups and people, anyone can be a member or an ally or an advocate for any of these groups. Um, I personally am a member of almost all of them. Uh, some of them are only in certain regions, like the Selenese Parents Network is only in Europe at this point. So um, obviously this, the Parents Network, it's a common interest or a common group of people, um, but you can be allies and advocates for any of these. So it's a great way for people within the organization to really actually get some leadership experience in a safe space, right? So you could be a leader within one of these groups. You could be a leader, say, in the veterans organization. And um, it's a great way for you to get exposure to how to run projects and, and manage teams and things without it being your actual job, right? You still have your job on the side. So that's why I like to talk about these and let people know that, that we have them. There's always great activities that they're doing. Um, but, but like I said, they're really tied to company initiatives. So they're actually doing things that matter and are able to make a difference for the greater good of the organization. So I'll move to the next slide here. Um, safety is something that's really, really, really important to us. So um, it's not only important for our manufacturing facilities, right? The places that we're making these food ingredients or that we're making these um, automotive pieces and um, plastics or um, emulsions and things. It's something that we do at all of our facilities. Um, safety is really about making sure that we operate safely at work so that we can go home safely and then operating safely at home so we can go back to work safely, right? So um, this is something that we started to really focus on about seven, eight years ago, and we have reduced safety incidents by 85%, which is really, really crazy. And some of these things are actually as simple as like putting lids on our drinks because um, 50 percent of injuries are caused by trips, slips or falls um, when we are able to protect our employees at home and in the in the workspace. We're able to then continue to um, not have downtime if we have safety incidents, um, if people are out because, of you know, they broke a hand or something like that. There's always things that we're always looking out for each other. No texting and walking, no sticking hands inside of elevator doors. It's just like really small things that you might not necessarily think. Um, think about, but it's at the um, the highest priority at Selene. So a lot of our meetings actually start with like safety moments so that we can talk about near misses and stuff like that. So this is um, John Mortimer. He's our vice president of manufacturing and um, he works at the Dallas office. I work with him a lot, but he is um, really the, the spearheading all of this um, safety initiative here at Selene. Yes, Connie, it's 85%. I know sometimes I'm cautious to tell people that like, uh, that that's the change that we've made because it sounds like, whoa, what was happening in the past? But those safety incidents, like I said, it could have been by someone just like slipping a little bit and they got a bruise on their wrist. That stuff has to be reported. So, um, but yes, it is a really great accomplishment. We're really excited about it. And we've become a, kind of a leader in our industry for other companies to come say like, how are you doing this? What changes have you made? Um, you know, in, in order to make sure that they're um, keeping their employees safe as well. So let me go to the next slide here. Okay, so you're probably thinking like, yeah, yeah, this is all great and awesome and everything. So I'll just tell you a little bit about the types of internship opportunities that we do have. Um, <laughs> yes, I know. So Connie is saying that she's guilty of texting and walking and sticking her hand inside of elevator doors. Me too. Um, me too. John has actually stopped me before like, hey, you're texting and walking like, oopsies, I'm so sorry. Um, the elevator door thing is crazy. There's been incidents that we've had, you know, like in 103 year history, there's been things that have happened and we've been able to learn from those. But yeah, I used to stick my hand inside of elevator doors all the time. And now I use the, the open or close button um, inside of it or I just wait for the next elevator. It doesn't take too terribly long. Um, so all of our internships, for the most part, um, have been filled. So I just want to kind of come out the gate and say that. However, we um, there could be potential for some some others. So let's just talk about what uh, in our intern program looks like in general. 
So um, a university intern for Salonese is a rising senior, right? So it means you would technically be a junior now, interning in your field of major for the purpose of a full-time opportunity selected through a competitive interview process. So some of you might be saying like, oh, dang, I'm a freshman or I'm a sophomore or something like that. Um, but that's okay, right? Now you're engaged. You understand who Selenies is. You can look out for us at career events. You can look out for opportunities in the future um, because right now they are for rising seniors. The reason they're for rising seniors is because our intern program is designed to, um, to be, be a pipeline of talent for the organization, right? So if we don't use our internships in order to make people into full-time hires at an entry-level um, students into the organization, then essentially all we're doing is training people to go work somewhere else. So it's for the benefit really of everyone, right? They are 12 full weeks. Um, and I told you about the full-time opportunity. They're really hands-on projects, um, especially for people that are in the Dallas office. Obviously you'll get to know um, leadership a lot. But in the age of this whole virtual world that we live in now, even if people have in-person internships, there's still a lot of like leadership access and things that we'll do virtually so people can get exposure to our CFO, our CEO, and other leaders and directors and um, SVPs within the organization, which is really one of the greatest benefits that's come out of um, us being forced into this, um, this remote environment. We also do philanthropy events and networking events. Um, philanthropy is something that's really, really important to Selenies, giving back to the communities in which we live and work. And so we do some of those events during the internship to give people a really good taste about um, what it's like to work for Selenies full time. And then some networking events as well in order to really um, kind of build on people's relationships within the organization and uh, meeting new people. Um, we're hoping that we would be we'll be going to a um, uh, a baseball game. Fingers crossed. We'll see how the vaccinations go, and if we're able to do that uh, this summer, that would be really fun, like we've done in the past. And then um, we also have a housing program for those that are uh, actual like chemical, mechanical, electrical engineers, which is the most types of engineers that we hire. Then they have access to a process safety curriculum as well. So all of our interns are posted online in the fall every year, right? So I mentioned that most of them are filled. There's a couple of them hanging out there right now. Um, and then I know that they're going to send some resumes over to me, so I'll be able to see other people that might still be looking for um, opportunities. But for those of you that are freshmen, uh, sophomores, and you're like, wow, I think I really would be interested in looking at Salonese in the future, then please keep your eyes out for things that are posted in the fall um, we usually have about 45 interns in the U.S. across all different uh, locations. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities there. But hopefully that kind of helped give you guys a really good overview of the organization and then um, give you a little bit more insight in regards to the internships. So does anyone have any questions? Popping, popping on here. Uh Lost your, I lost your video, but I'm sure everybody else sees it because this has actually happened a few times today in Hopin where I, I think I just have a bad internet connection here. Oh, no. Um, should I turn my, my camera off and then on again? No, I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure. Uh, uh, Connie, can you? Uh, I'm sure y'all all still see her, right? This happened on a couple of other talks. So there you are. There you are. Yep. There I am. Just some, some Hopin glitches. <laughs> so, yeah. So, no, that's interesting. So, so I'm interested in just understanding. So, I mean, how did, yeah, so she said she sees you. Um, so how did all this stuff with COVID impact your university recruiting processes? I mean, I know you were probably. That was yeah. Good question. Good question. Um, so it impacted us in a couple different ways. So Selenies is a, um, what were they calling them last year? Uh, essential business, right? So we were essential business. Um, so we were functioning the entire time. What happened with the internships was, especially because the manufacturing facilities did not shut down, right? So um, what happened was we have a couple different buckets of interns, people that are in the manufacturing side as far as engineering internships. So those went on and they were in person. 
Um, they were wearing masks, of course. And then what happened was it kind of ended up being like a more of a hybrid situation. Um, so people, would, they would be at the sites some of the time and then they would be at home uh, remote some of the time. I guess that at the time was best case scenario because they're at least able to kind of see, go in a couple hours a week and work on some projects on site and then be able to have um, that rapport and getting to know people um, since it would be really, really difficult for them to just go straight into a virtual environment. Yeah. What happened with the other students that are more on our corporate and commercial side, like more like marketing, supply chain, those types of things, we actually moved to, it was optional, but they moved to a Salonese professional mentorship program. So essentially the, the manager that they had originally been assigned really instead of it being more um, project based because it was actually an unpaid a model, um, they worked directly with their manager so they could kind of like talk about networking opportunities. They could talk about how to um, assess risks and navigate their career. And then they could also just really get um, some exposure in regards to how they should be crafting their resumes and stuff like that. And then we did some info sessions as well. So with like our, our um, chief financial officer was able to participate in those. You guys saw that picture of John Mortimer. He was part of that as well. Um, and so really trying to give them some value add, things that would be resume worthy um, so that they could put it on there. And we actually still hired some, some students out of that. Even though they weren't doing a paid internship with us, we still got to see their level of engagement, their question asking, and their interest. And so we still hired some students full time based on the way that the needs turned around for the business by, by fall. Um, so that was really exciting. I felt um, fortunate that we were able to kind of think quickly in order to, to kind of adapt and say like, okay, how do we not lose all of these awesome students that we have already secured and, and tried to work with and still be able to give them value? So um, it was kind of a, a two-part process. Yeah. And I, I mean, I know a lot of this has been focused around students and internships, but I know you guys are always hiring, you know, sort of, uh, you know, more senior talent, uh, you know, as far as uh, engineers. Yeah, as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so um, all of our opportunities are always posted on um, selling.com slash careers. Okay. And we have a team of recruiters that are fantastic that are always looking over anyone that applies. They look over all of that um, information. Right. So that then they can contact them directly. Um, so those could be, you know, people in IT or supply chain or, or all, all over the, the U.S. and the globe for that matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, there's a if you go into the expo hall, uh, they were available. Selenies was available today for a few hours today, but there's a video yeah. playing there and there's a, a button yeah. to look out to the site. And we are going to provide them with all information about attendees today. But Selenies was one of our sponsors and has helped us uh, put together a nice prize pa a pool for all the, the hackers. I know a lot of people who are hacking are also coming to catch these talks. So we, we do appreciate uh, your support with this. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys for um, for having me on and letting me me chat with you. Um, I didn't th I don't think I saw any other questions come through. So I know that everyone's trying to kind of do some dual things. They're still working on their projects and and maybe trying to listen, but you said you were recording this and we'll post it. Yeah, so yeah we're going to have the full schedule on the main site and there'll be play buttons for every one of the uh, videos yeah. and also for the boot camps. Cause uh, I, you know, like I said, I, I, it looks like the vast majority of people are over there. They, you know, in addition to just the major hackathon prizes, there's all kinds of little smaller challenges and a crypto trading competition, all kinds of stuff. So we just wanted to you know, have, uh, you know, kind of create, create some fun stuff for everybody. Yeah, absolutely. That's awesome. All righty. Well, we appreciate you and we will let you uh, enjoy your day. And this is the last talk of the day. So wow. mm -hmm. uh, we appreciate you. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. Everyone have a good evening. All right, good luck too. to all the hackers. Bye. Bye. All right. Well, that is the, the last talk of the day. And definitely, if you will, again, uh, I'm not sure if anybody has been into the expo hall, uh, uh, but there's a button over on the left that says expo. And there's, uh, you know, for all of our sponsors, uh, and, and this definitely would have been possible without our sponsors, uh, you know, there's uh, videos there that you can play to learn more about them. And uh, and then there's links off to the website where you can uh, go find out more information about them. And uh, so this is the last talk of the day and the last talk of the conference. And uh, I have that, had the time of my life sharing this stuff with you. And so just uh, feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn or Discord. Uh, if you join the Nackathon Discord, I'll, I'll be keeping an eye on that between now and the next event, which we're going to hold this annually. And uh, 
appreciate you, you guys hanging out and watching it. Take care.